Mary Louise Defender Wilson grew up in a family of Dakota Hadatsa storytellers on the Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota. Today, she'll tell us a story about the woman who turned herself into stone. I live in a rural area from a village called Porcupine, which is 30 miles west of Fort Yates, North Dakota. I've lived a long time. I was born in 1930, and I think during that time, I should have learned something, and I should be able to use that. I guess some of my recollections go back to sitting on top of this hill, which is to the south of where our house was, my grandfather was born in 1845, and he lived till I was seven. And I can remember sitting up there on that hill because we herded our sheep every day. It wasn't like now, you turned them loose and you didn't pay attention to them. We herded them every day and brought them back to the corral every night. And of course, we had dogs that helped us. And some of the things I remember is him talking about something, something in the environment that maybe to me could have been insignificant at the time, but he would tell about it and would sometimes do things and build little structures with sticks and the earth. Because of my, my grandfather's age, older people always came to visit. I was really, really into really telling stories, but I always thought all my life, these people are so wise and they have such profound thinking. And they would tell, you know, we have two kinds of, uh, of stories. Uhukaka, which are more like what is in English, you would say mythical events. And the others then were wichuyake, accounts of the people, which would be like our history. Usually the men would tell kind of like the historical things and the women told the more mysterious kind of things that they used to teach us with. The time you hear the stories, you don't uh, think about the valuable lessons or maybe you don't even understand it or think about it. But after you get older, but then you realize that there's a wealth of wisdom, knowledge, and you know, like philosophy that you'll have for your life. The woman who turned herself to stone, she went through all of her years. She got to be a teenager. And then her family began to think that she should have her own family and live in her own lodge. And they began to talk to her about that, but she said, I'm going to live in a different way, she said. But they insisted and they arranged a marriage for her because she was a very desirable person, a hard worker, kind, all the things that we value. So she married this man and went to live in her own lodge. Then she came back and Grandma said, Goodness, she said, isn't he good to you? Grandmother, she said, he's a fine man, treats me very well, but I told you I'm not meant to live like everybody else. And she left the lodge. It got to be toward evening, she didn't return. And Grandma got concerned. She said, she's not back, it's kind of bad. And she's not like that, she should come back. She never came back. The next morning then Grandma said, you know, we have to go search for her. So she gathered all their relatives and friends and they went off in the four directions to search for her. It was getting toward evening and there's this little hill and Grandma said, That's my grandchild. She was so happy. I can tell because she's sitting properly. So she ran up the hill and she embraced her granddaughter. Here she could feel that her hip fell like stone. Grandchild, what's wrong with you? What's happening to you? 
will take you back to the village and maybe somebody can help you. You feel like you're stoned. Grandmother, she said, I told you I'm supposed to live in a different way. And I'm turning myself to stone so I can stay out here forever. And all of these creatures that I think a lot of will all come by me. The coyote will come by and, and maybe rub up against me. And the birds will come and sit around me. She named all the creatures because I think that they really are powerful and they're so good. So I'm going to become stone. But before I come stone, I'm going to tell you something. If you ever have troubles, problems, bring me something that has a root and put it beside me. Tell me what it is that you're having difficulty with. And if I can, I will help you. She said that and she turned to stone. And that's the end of the story. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Humanities Council, a nonprofit, independent state partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities. The North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.